Welcome to another episode of Boom or Bust, the series where you design tiny subwoofer enclosures, I 3D print them, and we slam them head to head in this little cabin here to see whose design is the loudest. Now, today's design was sent in by a guy called James. James designed this enclosure originally to fit in a spare tire, spare wheel well. However, his original design, when sent in, I took a look at it and I said, hmm, you know what? That's really small, and I'm not sure that's gonna do too well. It's tuned very high. It was tuned like miles sky sky too high. So I just warned him of that in advance made some revisions to it He actually sent in a new revised design which is quite a bit longer now and tuned a bit lower And so we're gonna see how this performs the way this enclosure works is just it's very simple But it looks kind of cool and a bit different So it's just a tube that the driver sits in and then the port opening is kind of split into segments all the way around the base of the uh, Tube here and then the port itself is just a bigger wider tube that extends maybe three quarters of the way up and with the port exit around here. So this is a lot of port, not port area, the, the port has a lot of surface area is what I mean to say. There's a lot of surface area that the air is kind of going to be flowing up against and I don't know if that's going to affect how this sounds, I don't know if it's going to cause any chuffing or whether it's going to be negated, but I'm really curious to find out. Also there was no modelled screw holes or like mounting baffle or anything like that, it was literally just a tube and a tube. So so the driver is secured in there nice and tightly with the old blue tack. So this should perform exactly the same as a regular ported enclosure, but I just thought the design on the shape and everything was kind of interesting, a bit cool, hadn't really seen that before and I uh, thought I'd give it a go. Will it be able to beat? The monstrous half wicked one, which as a lot of you have corrected me actually wasn't exactly half because the, the horn mouth was still the full size, it needed to be half the horn mouth, but it still performed bloody fantastically, so really yeah, be interesting to see if uh, this can uh, knock that off the top shelf or if it can actually beat my aeroport benchmark enclosure that I printed for the first episode and uh, it probably may do better than the uh, neuter shooter, but we're gonna find out. Let's first of all whack it on the good old trusty Dayton Dats V2 to see what the impedance sweep looks like and go from there. Okay, what are we saying then on the impedance sweep? We have a regular ported box looking graph, although does anyone notice this little peak up here? What's that? That is at um, 1.391 kilohertz. Interesting. don't think I have an explanation for that, but okay, let's carry on. We are looking like we're tuned at around 186 hertz. That's pretty spot on for our testing. We're testing between 150 and 360 hertz. Um, so that looks like it's in the right kind of bandwidth band. That's that's nothing to be too concerned about. We have the initial impedance spike down here at 86 hertz, which is where the woofer is going to unload and the port completely stops working and the box disappears as far as the driver is concerned. And then we have another impedance spike up here at 274 hertz, which is where the port basically closes off as far as the woofer is concerned and the air spring inside the now sealed box starts working in phase with the driver. A its excursion. The two peaks are of very similar height, which is quite a contrast to the Omiramid, for example, a very oversized enclosure where the secondary peak was tiny because the box was so big, therefore the air spring didn't have much of a, an effect on the driver. And it's also a bit in contrast to the Neuter Shooter, which was a very small enclosure, which had the secondary spike much higher than the initial spike, showing that the air spring had a great effect on the woofer. And even when the woofer was fully unloaded and the port was fully unloaded, there there was still some pressures inside just because it was so small. This looks like a fairly well balanced enclosure to be fair in terms of the enclosure size and how the port is interacting with the driver. I am still super curious about this little peak up here though. What is that? Is that, is that, is that another Helmholtz mode? Is that some kind of quarter wave mode? Really curious. Probably haven't got the time right now to dive into it too much but I'm really interested to see how this sounds just to the ear out on the table here. We haven't done that for every enclosure so far but we did it last week for the neuter shooter and it was really interesting to see how it actually sounded out in the open and whether there was any port noise and stuff like that so i'm going to do the same with this little tube enclosure we're going to call this one barrel of base here we go how about that this looks like a barrel the barrel of base we're going to see what the barrel of base sounds like just to the ear here in the open space so i'm going to play 150 hertz which is 25 scaled hertz You can feel the air coming out around the ring here. It's like there's a lot of lot of port displacement. 
interesting. It has a slight buzz to it. I wonder what the buzz is about. The exact sound of the buzz goes away when I change the area of the port here with my hand. So I don't think it's a mechanical thing. I think it is actually something that's happening um, acoustically inside here. It, just, it sounds like a buzz, but it, it must be something to do with how the air is interacting with the surfaces inside here. That's not buzzing anymore. But now it is. Interesting. Uh, looking at this on the Room EQ Wizard scope, it shows us that it's not clean at all at this lower frequency, 150 hertz. We've got this mad harmonic overlaid. You can see the shape of the wave is horrendous. What is interesting though is that it cleans up if I cover the port or attempt to cover the port with my fingers. Don't get a great seal, obviously, which is why there's lots of high frequency chuffing sounds, but the sine wave actually becomes more like a sine wave rather than a couple of tones overlaid on one another. I suspect that because this box is tuned to about 184 hertz, that's at 150 that we're playing, it's just unloaded and therefore we're getting really strong harmonics kick in as a result of that unloading. Once we step up the frequency to 33 scaled hertz or 198, which is very, very close to box tuning frequency, we see a much cleaner looking sine wave here and that progresses upwards on the 270 and 360 hertz that we're playing much, much cleaner sine waves. We only get this nasty looking harmonic -y sine wave at the lower frequency where the box is a bit unloaded. And that stands true if we also look at the RTA screen, you can see that the, as we increase the volume, the harmonic at 300 hertz, which is exactly double the 150 hertz we're playing, actually overtakes the fundamental frequency in volume once we get to a certain level. So yeah, very, very nasty sounding um, lower frequency tone there. But the other frequencies are much cleaner with a strong sharp point on the fundamental that we're playing, a couple of harmonics coming in as expected, but nothing like the 25 scaled hertz. Let's get this thing opened up and plop her in place. Now, in terms of location, which is this going to be best firing at the back of the cabin like this, where we've got the woofer and the port firing back? Perhaps it's going to be best firing to the side. Not too sure. I'll test a couple of ones and whichever one was the loudest is the one that I went with. But I think at least for the demos, I'm going to fire it this way so we can see the driver through the uh, doorway here. That's always a good camera angle.
There we go then. What's weird is it didn't really sound that loud to me in person here, but it was doing something really weird with the cloth over the door. Have a look. Must have just been some wave that was building up on the material and then kind of like causing it to bend in. It definitely wasn't like a backwards and forwards from the air pressure. I'm not sure how this is going to perform based on the listening experience I just had, but let's find out together. As always, we're doing door open first for this range of tests. We're testing 25, 33, 45 and 60 scaled hertz. In real life, they're 150, 198, 270 and 360. So let's start off with the lowest frequency at 150 hertz, which is 20. 25 scaled hertz. So we're going to increase the level until we either reach mechanical excursion limit or 15 watts on the watt meter. And uh, we're definitely not going to reach mechanical excursion limit. It's a pretty small box. So we're going to go to 15 watts. Let's see what it's doing at 25. Point one watts and a one thirty three point eight. So it's way off of the super high peaks we've seen with some of the other enclosures, but it's a fair start. Remember, 150 hertz was actually unloaded. The box is tuned a little higher. So I'm expecting to see a bit of an improvement on 33 scaled hertz being 198, as this box was apparently tuned at about 184-ish. So let's do 33 scaled hertz next. Mm -hmm. Fifteen point four watts there and a one thirty two point five. So that's pretty flat so far. Often we see a massive roll off, a massive dip as we come out of the Helmholtz mode of this enclosure. But uh, yeah, it's relatively flat. So one thirty two point five. 45 scaled hertz now. These higher frequencies sounded very loud to the ear when I was testing it out on uh, Room EQ Wizard. So it'd be interesting to see what it sounds like. Fifteen point three watts, and oh, we've got a bit of a boost—a one thirty-five point two. This is very flat so far. That's two dBs up on the lower frequencies, which we haven't really seen a lot of with the bigger enclosures. Often it drops off drastically at the lower frequencies. And last but not least, sixty scaled hertz. Fifteen point three and one twenty-nine point two. So a bit of a drop off on the highest frequency there. Cool, pretty flat. Now let's seal off the cabin, completely close the door off so we nullify the home halts mode of this cabin and run those tests again. I imagine we're gonna be seeing similar-ish results at the higher frequencies, but um, a bit of a, well, a significant drop off on that 25 scaled hertz where it's unloaded. 15.2 and a 123.5. I think we already knew that without the home halts mode to boost that lower unloaded frequency, it's not gonna do too well. Well, should pick things up here with a 33. 15.02 and a 126.9. 45 scaled. 15.2 and a 132.9. Yeah, and 60 scaled. 15.7 and a 132.6. So, working those scores out as an average, we get a 132.93 dBs with the door open and, interestingly, with the door closed, a 128.98. So, although it knocks the Omnimid, obviously, off the bottom of boom status into bust status, although it's at the bottom of the door open category, it's actually mid-range with the door closed, smack bang in the middle, above my benchmark error ported. The bottom three of the door closed category are all very, very close, like 0.1, 0.2, 0.05 of a dB off each other. And my explanation for this is as follows. Really, most of these enclosures have been tuned pretty low. So their kind of port emphasis and the dB boost you get with the port are at the lower frequencies. So especially with the 45 hertz and with the 60 hertz, scaled hertz, they're not really being influenced much by the ports or the stuff we've really seen from these enclosures so far. So they were very similar output levels anyway. We're just listening to the radiation 
from the cone of the driver rather than any kind of helm holes or port or quarter wave boost or anything like that. So for the most part, those higher frequencies are all going to be about the same. And this cabin will boost and emphasize lower frequencies if they are produced potently by the enclosure themselves. That's why we've seen like 145 dBs on the lower frequencies on some of these enclosures that are tuned properly down there. And when you close the door off, it completely negates that Helmholtz mode that boosts the lower frequencies, meaning that the higher frequencies all kind of end up being the same, provided they are actually produced at a reasonably similar level, which they have been with these enclosures because what well, the higher frequencies were just listening to the driver, which has stayed the same. Now, realistically, the dB levels should scale exactly. They shouldn't be this where we've got a a split where the base barrel is bottom with the door open but mid-range with the door closed and the reason that that's actually happened is down to positioning in the cabin so when I work out what the best position is for the enclosure when we're DB testing I generally test with the lower frequency I play like the 25 or 33 move it around a bit and see what is the highest score on the screen I don't tend to do it with the higher frequencies but naturally what is the best positioning for the lower frequency with the door open or door closed might not be the best position for the higher frequency it might benefit more from having the enclosure slightly closer to the middle of the cabin with that 45 or that 60 scaled hertz or pointed more towards the back or the side might give the upper frequency a benefit over the lower frequency and that's why we see this shift here with them not being completely level with one another the door open door closed because it will change depending on the positioning of the box when you have the door open and door closed but yeah cool little enclosure interesting little design I think that given its interesting nature and um, design, it didn't do too badly. Although it did do worse than the Neuter Shooter, which is definitely interesting and not ideal enclosure design with the door open. But yeah, with the door closed, it actually seemed to perform okay. And in terms of what it would sound like and the sine waves coming off of this thing above the tuning frequency. So if you weren't listening to this unloaded, the sine waves looked perfectly fine. You know, there wasn't any weird harmonics or anything going on like there was with the Neuter Shooter. So this would listen fine it would sound gray and it would be relatively flat the inherent shape of this enclosure as well lends itself to quite a good structural strength uh, tubes and cylinders are very structurally strong and the pressures that this enclosure will be subjected to by the driver will be applied to this in all directions so you're not really going to get issues with like panel flex so you could build this out of a much thinner material than you would a sort of cube box a square box where you're going to have the panels flexing like that the this cylinder cylind cylindrical shape is very strong so that has that benefit as well. If you think you can design a box to knock the half wicked one off of its current throne on both of these categories then there is a link in the video description to some instructions that will tell you all of the information driver TS parameters size of this cabin etc that you need to know to design and submit an enclosure for this series if you love this series and you run a business selling something that you think that my audience would love to see then drop me an email there's an email address in the description and we can maybe get you a sponsored message or segment or a sticker on the enclosure cabin here something Thing like that. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I'm getting pretty good feedback. Um, I love reading your comments. Literally, I don't really care about video likes. I don't really care if you subscribe. The algorithm is good enough for that. I just freaking love reading your comments. I just sit there refreshing my comments YouTube studio app like literally every five minutes when I release a new one of these, just reading what you guys think. So if you've got some thoughts and you haven't commented before, just drop a comment. I will literally love to read it so much. Um, any suggestions you've got or any critical feedback as well is, is gladly, I'll gladly take on board. The enclosure for this episode was actually supposed to be a transmission line box but sadly the printer did something weird and none of the walls adhered to one another very strange so i'm trying to reprint that but it was going to take too long to print to get it done for today's episode and this one was a nice quick print so i thought i'd do this one today instead but the next episode should be a t-line and then we've got some really interesting wacky crazy enclosures coming so definitely subscribe if you want to stay up to date with this series and not miss an episode and uh, yeah guess i'll see you in the next one take it easy have a safe week and uh, yeah get designing if you haven't already